going everybody well we got a two for today um first of all like the little clip at the beginning definitely going to be some loud parts to this video um i just did a overhaul on the six by six uh took the axe system out of it and put the sidewinder four and the outrunner motor in there uh, i also switched it over to the fly sky radio um, i was starting to have issues with the traxxas radio wasn't wanting to shift the servos the micro servos anymore and just to see if the servos was bad or if it was the radio i put it over on my gt5 and everything seems to be working just fine so that stock traxxas took a dump on me but anyways i wanted to test it out and i'm also testing out some uh, weight on the front um, i just got some brass rods zip tied on the front for now um i just want to see exactly how much weight i need to hang off the front of that thing uh, before i make something permanent for it um, and then as far as the capper goes uh, last week i had taken it to the quarry and it got ran pretty hard out there even though the video was real short um, it got in some really bad binding situations and then I ended up, uh, going to the indoor comp over in Greenville on Sunday and about halfway through the second course, uh, this thing started, uh, stalling out and or slipping i'm not sure what was going on uh i was in the middle of my run and i just needed to finish so i kept going um so i'm gonna give it a run around the pit here and see if i can recreate whatever that issue was and see if i can properly diagnose the problem that way i can get it fixed so testing two rigs today um not sure how long the video is gonna go overall it's pretty cold outside today again and the wind is blowing but i just figured i'd bring the camera and take you along for the ride and see if anything interesting happens so we'll get to it i've had this particular climb and countless videos so i'm probably not going to do that many different angles of it just set you about the halfway point and go on about my business just trying to see if i can get this thing to slip like it honestly it felt like it had a slipper clutch and it was slipping um, it wasn't making any extra noises but you could hear the motor was sounded like it was turning but none of the wheels were and i haven't had any chatter like i'm you know missing any teeth on any of the gears so i'm just not sure what in the world was going on really put that much uh, stress on this fusion motor but I also don't know the uh, longevity or the durability of these things either this is the first one I've ever had and I'm sure you're staring right into the Sun but I won't be there for long I'm really hoping that this motor is not taking a dump on me if so, 
as much as I like it, I won't be going back with another one if that's the case. So far, so good. Now, we'll come over here to the uh, the harder part of the playground. See if I can get this thing to bind up. And it's, it wasn't really in a bind any of the times that it happened either. It was really weird. I've never had anything do what this thing did the other day and it's kind of hard to explain Got myself in a bit of a pickle here. Don't know that I can keep going. problem is today can't seem to hit this line wasn't pretty but 
that ought to do. Especially for not standing where I normally do and being able to see that rock there. So I don't know whether I should be happy that the problem's not uh, making itself known or if I should be frustrated because I know that there was something going on with it and now I don't have a clue what it is because it's not doing it again. I'm sure just about everybody's probably had that problem at one point or another, whether it's with RC or full size. This past weekend, um, I ran this and the Gapra both in class three. And I definitely started out pretty horrible. Uh, they had some pretty narrow gates and both of these rigs are pretty damn wide. But somehow I managed to pull it together and I ended up getting uh, second place with this rig and fourth place with the Gapra. So that was pretty cool, but I was definitely surprised. I didn't figure I'd be anywhere close to the podium with either of them. I actually had quite a few more people there than they normally do as well. I don't I don't know what the number was exactly, uh, total, but I know that there was definitely more there than there usually is. It's cool to see. Definitely uh, some different rigs as well. And, you know, when the catch a little hell for running some ruptures, on the Gapra, but there was actually a couple guys there that was running pin tires, and they looked like they were uh, some very healthy rigs. Uh, I didn't get a good look at them, but the ones that was running pin tires looked like they may have actually they could have been an MOA or a shafty of some sort. Like I said, I didn't get a good look at them. I just know I seen some pin tires, but they were that kind of a, a build. I don't, I don't know where they ended up. I'm sure probably one of those was who took first place, but I don't know for sure. I don't know that I ever caught those guys' names, and if I did, I, I don't remember. I'm horrible with names. But I may or may not have something that I ordered before I seen them this weekend, but I may or may not have some pin tires on the way. <clears throat> I saw uh, a video last week sometime, uh, I think it was Crawler Canyon, he reviewed, I think that they're actually in Jorah brand uh, pin tires, and they seem to work really well on his rocks. I'm gonna give them a shot, and I went ahead and got some of the the gel inserts as well. Just, I've never had good luck with the 3D printed inserts. Um, I've tried a few different uh, brands, and I I don't know why I just can't get them to work.
as good as uh, my dual stage foams that I put together. some issues here can't get that thing to bite there we go but, yeah I don't know I guess uh, I'm just gonna have to oh. tried to get in a bind and got carried away but since I can't recreate that issue I was having, I guess I'm just going to have to chalk it up and uh, just keep running it like I normally do until something happens. But aside from that, this thing's been doing great. I freaking love it. Um, after the finals with the Cheerio challenge with hello rc i'm kind of thinking about maybe putting this thing on another flat rail like i did with the gapra um i'm not sure yet but because of the cheerio challenge tournament um i can't do anything to this uh, in order to run in the finals i've got to leave it how it was when i competed the first time and that's been rough because it's already been what i'm probably coming up on two months now and at the rate things are going i'm assuming it's probably going to be at least another month and for somebody that changes things on a regular basis not being able to touch this has been rough so Yep, just waiting to get past that, and then I can really start tearing into this thing. Um, I'm definitely going to need to upgrade shocks. Like I said, I'm probably going to go with another flat rail and get some high clearance links on here. Let's see if I can make it any better. But we'll call that a day for the Capra. Um... It seems to be doing just fine. So whatever the hiccups was over there at the comp, uh, hopefully it was just a fluke. So I'll we'll hop back on this six by six. I may go ahead and unhook it from the trailer and run it around on a few rocks, even though it's not set up for climbing at the moment. Uh, kind of want to see how that new electronics system does in it. So it's pushing a lot of weight for that little motor. So, I don't know. We'll see what goes on here. Something's going to happen. And in case you didn't remember, audio warning, she's a screamer. Probably not going to get far on the rocks with open diffs, huh? Let's see. Got to try to remember where I put everything at. And I'll tell you what's nice. On the fly sky, I can control them individually so I can lock the rears in without the fronts being locked in first. That'll be nice for when I'm towing and pulling and stuff.
that was one thing that always got on my nerves about that Traxxas setup was the front diff was always locked first. Now I'm sure I could have probably went in and switched things around, but I didn't ever want to dig into it too much. I've heard too many people have some horror stories with that. So I don't think we're going to get any further with just the rears locked. Maybe so. Having duels on the back really uh, amps things up a bit. This thing's a monster. I freaking love it. So I highly doubt that this thing's going to make it up hard line, but we'll at least try the bottom half of it. crazy see if I can block the Sun a little bit for you here Wow that's insane I never would have guessed it would have made it up that. Now this part here, with as much weight as I've got on it and it's towing set up with the shocks in the rear, I'll put money on it that it won't make it up the top, but since it did so well on the bottom, we'll just give it a quick shot. Yeah, instantly tires to the sky. I'm not trying to flip this thing over backwards at the top, but it made a hell of a run up the first half of it though. That was pretty, pretty cool. Since it couldn't do hard line, I'm not gonna try to take it up the hard side over here, but I'd say it should be able to do the the right side of this little obstacle here. Listen to her sing.
I don't know that I've ever tried to bring the 6x6 up this particular line. But now's as good of a time as any. I don't know if it's got the breakover angle. Oh, it's, it's got the breakover. Does it have the traction? Ooh. Okay. Well. She's got such a big booty on her, I had to do a three-point to get back lined up. And at this point, winning's winning if I can make it. Nope. There it is. Oh my goodness. Would you just look at that booty? <laughs> She's thick. That's that good stuff there. So this is probably just ridiculous to even try, but we're gonna try anyways. This thing doesn't have the best uh, vertical climbing abilities at the moment. That poor little outrunner motor's got to be hot as hell. Oh, it's so close to making it and also going off the edge. Oh, that's rough. Okay. Well, that was not pretty at all. <laughs> but because of the massive footprint on the back of this thing, it did it. That's crazy. That's asking a lot out of that little outrunner motor and also asking a lot out of those dually adapters. That's a hell of a side load to be putting on this thing. So definitely got to give a shout out to uh, Jim and I'm sorry if I butcher the name, but I want to say it's Jim Menino. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but that's how it's spelled. Uh, found that guy on uh, Facebook. He's got a group page called uh, Dual Wheel Adapters. And he makes these things and sells them. And at a very affordable price. Um, they're all aluminum. And they've held up to some serious abuse. I mean, I've been, you know, hauling 35, 40 pounds of concrete on that trailer 
and I haven't had a single problem with these adapters. They are awesome. But anyways, I'm probably going to go ahead and call it. Everything seems to be doing just fine. So I'm happy with the 6x6 and its new electronics and everything. Uh, the Capra, I can't for the life of me figure out what in the hell was going on with it slipping or whatever in the heck it was doing. So I'll just keep running it until it pops its head up again. It's still an awesome rig. One of these weekends, mark my words, I'm gonna get both of my capper based rigs on the podium for class three at the same time. It will happen. That is my goal for this winter. So, anyways, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the screaming, ridiculous nonsense that I got going on up here today. Um, I hope y'all have a good one, and we'll catch you in the next one. Later.